It's October 28th, just two days before the start of the 2002-2003 NBA regular season. The Los Angeles Clippers are hard at work, getting ready to kick off the season, a season that has everything riding on it. As they work to fit in new faces to one of the most promising young cores in the NBA, every player on the roster understands that this may be their last chance to keep this group together. Nine out of the 14 players on the roster have expiring contracts after this season, including star players Elton Brand and Lamar Odom two of the most talented young players in the NBA and childhood teammates. Elton Brand and Lamar Odom played together on the same AAU team along with fellow NBA player Ron Artest, a team that has become legendary on the AAU circuit, a team that went 69-1 during their time together, losing only to a team led by future NBA star Baron Davis. But that reign of dominance has eluded Elton and Lamar in the NBA. Last season was one of the most promising seasons of their young careers but late injuries to Lamar Odom contributed to the Clippers losing 10 out of their last 13 games and dropping to 9th in the fierce Western Conference. This glimmer of hope has sparked excitement in the fan base that has very little to cheer about in the last decade. Their only playoff appearance in that span coming in 1997, a first round sweep at the hands of the eventual Western Conference champion Utah Jazz. Year after year, the team has watched lottery picks come and go with an owner notorious for not renewing rookie scale contracts and filling the roster with journeymen and fringe players. In the 1998 draft, the Clippers would land the number one pick in the draft, selecting raw but promising big man Michael Oliva Candy, who at 7-1 led the University of Pacific to an improbable NCAA tournament berth in 1997 and averaged 22 points per game, 11 rebounds, and three block shots following season. But in the process, they passed over breakout stars such as Vince Carter, Antoine Jameson, and Inglewood native Paul Pierce. In 1999, the Clippers once again found themselves in the lottery, landing the fourth pick in the draft, this time selecting Lamar Odom. At 6'10 and with point guard skills, Lamar Odom was one of the highest rated high school prospects in his class. Lamar Odom was the real deal, beginning his NBA career with 30.12 rebound game, playing in the first ever game at the brand new Staples Center home to the Clippers, the Lakers, and the NHL's Kings. Unfortunately for the Clipper fan base, Lamar Odom's obvious talent only translated to six more wins than the year prior, as the Clippers finished 15 and 67 and earned another trip to the lottery. The 2000 draft would add some serious punch to the Clippers' young talent pool. The Clippers possessed the third and 18th pick in the draft, to which they took high school phenom Darius Miles at number three and Quentin Richardson out of DePaul at number 18. The Clippers would also trade a future first round pick along with cash considerations for the rights to Keegan Dooling and second year player Corey Maggetti. In the second round, they would draft Marco Jaric out of Serbia, a 6'7 point guard who would remain in Europe but is set to make his debut for this team this season. That season led to 16 more wins and some excitement in the fan base, but the Clippers still found themselves in the lottery for the fifth year in a row. The Clippers landed the number two pick and drafted hometown high school phenom Tyson Chandler at a Compton Dominguez High School, and then shocked fans when they traded Chandler for the former Rookie of the Year, Elton Brand, of the Chicago Bulls. With Brand added to the mix, the Clippers surged and looked to be eyeing a playoff berth before injuries derailed the season. Over the offseason, in a scrutinized move, the Clippers traded Darius Miles for highly regarded young floor general Andre Miller, a move that the coaching staff hopes to bring more stability and poise to the point guard position, but left fans questioning breaking up the popular duo of D. Miles and Q. Rich. Now, with the first regular season game only days away, the team works to gel and starts the season off on the right foot against Miller's former team, the Cleveland Cavaliers. But before the season kicks off, there's still a lot of work for the team to do. With Andre Miller now tasked with running the offense, the team has been working hard to develop the chemistry needed for a playoff push. Starting off the season with a statement win is vital to the team. After the Cavs, the Clippers match up with a three-time defending champion, Los Angeles Lakers, a rival that's largely been one-sided followed by a visit from the Detroit Pistons, a team who won 50 games last season, winning the Central Division before falling to the Celtics in the Eastern Conference semifinals. With that level of competition to end the first homestand of the season, followed by their first road trip of the season, they need to make a statement against the Cavs to build momentum. Elton Brand has been the unquestioned on-court leader, and his arrival brought consistent production to a group of young but talented players. Elton's aim for the team is a playoff berth, Individual accolades such as all-star selection don't matter as much to him as showing the world of what this young team is capable of on the big stage of the NBA playoffs.
but in order to reach the elusive playoffs, the team will have to rely more on just their star players. They'll need everyone to elevate their game and come together to fight through the intensely fierce Western Conference. Andre Miller will be relied upon to minimize mistakes and steady a team that could often blame costly turnovers for close losses last season. He'll need a win over the fans who weren't sure how to react to the offseason trade. Corey Maggette will be called on to be the team's third scoring option. After averaging 11 points per game in his second season with the Clippers, Maggette, who's an athletic slasher, has the gifts to be a factor on both ends of the court. Lining up at center is former first overall pick, Michael Oluwakandi, who has shown flashes of potential but largely not met expectations. Fans have questioned his passion for the game and commitment to his own development. With Oluwakandi, one of many players vying for a new contract after this season, the pressure is on for him to raise his game to the next level. Quinton Richardson, now entering his third year, was a key role player for the Clippers last season, finishing third in the sixth man of the year award race. The team will need him to up his production and lead a second unit that often gave away leads last season. Joining him on the second unit is Eric Piekowski. Entering his eighth year, Piekowski is the longest tenured Clipper, being drafted by the team in the 1994 draft. The sharpshooter shot 46% from three-point range last season and will be a key to spacing the floor, allowing Elton Brand to go to work down low. As the Clippers prepare for their first game of the season, can they take care of business versus the Cavs? And with the matchup with the Lakers on their mind, one question looms. Is this finally the year that the Clippers can get out of their shadow? Next time on Clippers Rising. The Clippers look to open up a three-game homestand with a win and look towards a duel with crosstown rivals, the three-time defending NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers, led by Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant.